Good morning, YouTube pipe community. I'm gonna talk today about uh, Hearth and Home Classic Burley Cake, which is what I'm smoking right now in this Eugene Rich Era custom built. Uh, the nomenclature is almost illegible but you can still make it out and tell that it is uh, from the Eugene Rich era. Thick wall, huge, huge chunky pipe. Falconite saddle bit. Uh, I picked this one up off an eBay seller that refurbishes the pipes. I think it was Holy Smokes Pipes. Does a fantastic job. <clears throat> so I don't have any of the Hearth and Home Classic Burley Cake out here to show you with me, but if anyone's familiar with the uh, image, and uh, I'll see if I can maybe post up an image of it somewhere here or over there. To me, it reminds me of um, hash browns that you would get when you go out for breakfast at a diner. And the cook takes the spatula and presses it down and kind of turns it into like a, a pancake, right? That's kind of how the tobacco comes. It's, it's, it's like a very loose crumble cake pancake is the best way I can describe it. Typical looking burly, but it's not cube cut. It's basically, uh, it's kind of a mix between ribbon and coarse cut burly. And I would say for me, at least as far as my taste goes, it lands somewhere in between half and half and velvet in terms of the flavor profile that you get from it with it maybe leaning slightly more towards the velvet side. Uh, I feel half and half kind of has more of a raisin note, nutty flavor to it, as opposed to the velvet, which maybe has that slight anise licorice type liqueur flavoring. I don't know. And I'm not huge on straight burley blends. Um, I always said if I was gonna have a straightforward burley blend, I would just stick with velvet. <clears throat> and that was based off of my experiences with those over-the-counter old-timey burley blends, which were half and half velvet, Sir Walter Raleigh. Um, and out of those, I liked velvet the best. Um, never tried Carter Hall, never tried Prince Albert or Granger, but I almost feel like it's really not necessary. I feel like all of those Burleys are probably very close and similar within the same vein of those old-timey, over-the-counter Burley ones. Excuse me. Um... But now after having had the Hearth and Home Classic Burley Cake, I'm pretty much considering just uh, buying more of that to keep in terms of like a bulk supply to have to dip into over the years from this point moving forward. I will say I found that when I first received it, the moisture content was actually pretty good. And uh, I found you could put it right into a bowl and start smoking it. However, I felt like it can burn on the hotter side. Um, 
that might be partially due to my smoking habits because I tend to puff aggressively sometimes. But after the first few bowls of having it straight out of the package from how it arrived, I decided to dry it out even further to the point where it was almost crispy. Almost. Not quite there, but almost. Got it really dry. And um, now I feel like it smokes just that much more cooler. That much cooler, I should say. That wasn't too good at English. My apologies. But uh, I do enjoy it. It's pretty good. Might be able to get some of those other old-timey blends in the cans at, at a cheaper price, but I think if the flavor profile is what's really important to you, then spending a little bit more in terms of the costs is worth it. Unlike, however, purchasing old used custom builds. <clears throat> I got interested in custom built pipes years back. I was actually watching uh, bushcrafting videos and I came across this guy, uh, 72 Woodsman. Uh, presenter's name was Eric. He has since stopped making videos on YouTube. And he was actually focusing on a story about his Buck 110 folding knife. But in the video that I saw, uh, which wasn't his original Buck 110 story, it was kind of a revisit to his Buck 110 story. He was out in the woods and he made himself a little campfire and he pulled out this big chunky piece of briar pipe and I don't know, was smoking Stonehaven or some other type of Virginia Burley type blend, I think. And I thought to myself, man, that is a cool looking pipe. Uh, I actually think in that video, it might have been um, not a custom built, but a BP Jum. And I just thought the big, chunky, deep, rusticated walls looked awesome. So, of course, that led me down the rabbit hole of investigating. You know what type of pipes and discovered that whole family bp jum custom built courtly uh <clears throat> there's there's a few sub brands that were all manufactured through the custom built factory <clears throat> over the years some of them were sears and roebuck company direct only like uh, yorkshire's i have a yorkshire pipe that's very similar looking to the custom built and I believe they came out of the custom built line. Anyway, I digress. Back then when I was first getting into the pipe smoking and had gotten interested in trying to acquire at least a custom built pipe, um, the prices were still reasonable uh, in terms of even a well refurbished custom built pipe. You can find them on eBay or through private sellers for 40 to 60 bucks and I felt that was kind of reasonable but it seems like over the past few years now custom builds have gotten a little ridiculous in terms of what people are asking for them now don't get me wrong there are there are some that if they're new never been used recently discovered and you're willing to pay well over a hundred dollars for that pipe and you just have to have it by all means um, most people are only willing to spend what they think something is worth that's kind of where I sit I still look at custom builds but 
I don't think I'm going to buy any more. I have this one. I have a Courtly, which is uh, the smaller pocket-sized version of this. I have a Yorkshire. Um, I don't have a BP Jum, but I do have like the knockoff of it, which is Pipe Maker. But it looks identical to a BP Jum, and it's got the same custom-built style saddle bit that a custom-built would have. So I'm okay with it being a Pipe Maker and it not saying BP Jum on it. That doesn't mean a lot to me to me it's more about the aesthetics and how it actually performs you know while you're smoking it uh, and I do have uh, what else do I have in my custom built line if anybody's interested I'll make a video I'll show what custom built I have it's not a lot um, Tom Howard is that his name the original custom built Got one of his pipes with the nomenclature on it. That's a really nice uh, tomato. Deep rustications. I don't see a need to have to have nothing but custom built in a collection. Um, but the prices that people have been asking for them lately is just ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. Um, I know they're not made anymore, and that puts it into that whole supply and demand type category. But to me, when you understand that even back in the day when they were made, they were a budget-friendly pipe, at least according to the research I've done over the years and the information I've uh, acquired about them, I can't justify spending over $100 for a custom built pipe or one of its subsidiaries the BP Jums the Yorkshire's the Courtley's his nibs originally I thought maybe I would try and get one of every namesake but sorry I was checking out the uh, the groundhog came out to eat I'll give you all a quick little, see if I can get them in here for you. Can you see them out there? No way. Whatever. Anyway, I don't know. If any of you are into custom builds, I'd be interested to see if I'm the only one who thinks that. Um, like I said, if you're the type of consumer that you see one and it's a shape and it's the perfect custom built that you've been waiting and searching for and you're willing to spend that kind of money on it, that's fine. But needs and wants are two different things, and I'm happy with the few that I have in, in my collection. So, even though I still look, I'll probably not buy any more because the truth is, uh, as much as I love these pipes, I don't really smoke them all that often either. Uh, and a lot of that is attributed to the fact of the maintenance of the vulcanite stems. Which, even when you're not smoking them, you, you still have to make sure every once in a while you dab some mineral oil or obsidian oil on, on the stems to keep them from, you know, starting to really oxidize too badly so that it doesn't lead you into have to doing the OxyClean bath and the, you know, polishing papers and all that kind of stuff. If I knew where I could uh, 
send these things out to and get acrylic versions of these made I would do it for a couple of them just so that I would actually smoke them that much more this burly cake is actually really decent as far as I'm concerned I enjoy it Anybody who's watching me knows I definitely prefer crossovers, Balkans, Englishes. And then I start moving into aromatics and Virginia Burleys. Then Virginia Periques and then straight Virginia's last. I guess I'm just not experienced enough yet to fully enjoy straight Virginia's. I gotta work my way up to that. Anyway, that's just going to about do it. I didn't want to make this too long of a video. But I would like to thank uh, everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. I've really been appreciating the, the feedback lately and the comments. Um, it's basically going to do it. Hearth and Home Classic Burley Cake. If you like burley and you haven't tried it, I would say order a little bit. Try it because I'm not even a burley guy and I like this. And as far as the custom builds go, to each his own. I wish everybody luck. If, uh, if, if you really dig these and you're looking to get one because you don't have any yet, like I said, I would just be careful, you know? you gotta have it you gotta have it I guess the only time I jumped on a custom built like that was the one time I saw that uh, Tom Howard I just think I must have found that one as soon as it listed and I was like I'm not even gonna take chances with waiting around and watching this thing I think I just did like a buy it now and even then I think that was maybe 75 or 80 something bucks I couldn't be wrong I'd have to go back and check. Anyway, hope everyone's having a great weekend. And uh, enjoy the Labor Day weekend. Until next time, be good.